this first event of the six is the women's under 20 10k 36 athletes from 21 countries taking part the australians expected to be very strong although of course the outstanding favorites are the chinese in just about every race through these two days the chinese look dominant on paper and are expected to produce the goods they're very very good technicians indeed the italians of course are strong in the walks as are the uh, spanish indeed the mediterranean countries mara really do enjoy their race walking absolutely and race walking really is a global sport we see you know teams from Central America uh, Europe Asia now China and Japan also very strong so it really is a global discipline well, they're one of the uh, favorites Olivia Sandri of Australia is expected to uh, feature the 19 year old but in wonderful form of late that Australian team, of course, uh, enjoying their summer weather. Back down under, will be well acclimatised for the uh, temperatures of the mid-20s that are expected to appear over this next uh, hour or so. Yeah, full team. And we've got the judges there. Uh, we'll come on to the rules in just a moment. Eight judges uh, will be making sure the athletes stick to the rules. And those judges, of course, will be watching very carefully the technique of the athletes. They have to maintain contract with the ground. And the uh, chief judge, Zoe Eastwood Bryson, wears a body cam. So when uh, it's uh, suitable, we will take footage from that body cam to see what she sees as chief judge. ready to go on the start line a large ukrainian team was due to compete here in muscat the amani capital but only one athlete was able to come and that athlete 17 year old valeria sholomitska is in this first race the women's under 20 10k she was able to get here along with her coach because they were training in turkey when the conflict broke out last week they came straight to muscat from turkey and this a moment for ukraine is a show of support and solidarity with ukrainian athletes and people who've been placed in grave danger by the russian invasion and this important show of support was requested specifically by athletes and teams attending the championships. World Athletics President Sebastian Coe, himself a two-time Olympic champion, keen to show his support to write a picture. You can see him carrying a square of flowers in the blue and gold of Ukraine. A moment for Ukraine. Sam Co, very, very keen to show his uh, support and togetherness with the athletes, and in particular, the young Ukraine athlete Sholomitska. Co himself, of course, raced in the 1980 Olympic Games, where he took the first of his two gold medals. A uh, Games itself, not without controversy. The athletes, though, now focused on the racing to come. Sholomitska, 17 years old, Mara, such a tender age and so much uh, resting on her shoulders Abs in a way. Absolutely, but she's one of the best athletes in this field, fourth at the World Under-20 Championships last year in the 10,000 metres there. We are underway. The World... Well, they get underway under, uh, with a slight delay there just to raise the tension even more. And as you can see, the first section of the uh, course from the start line, relatively flat. I think most of the uh, drop, Mara, that they will negotiate in this next few minutes is uh, in a fairly short space. In other words, it's exceptionally steep for about 150 metres. Yes, that's right. So they, they start off on the downward uh, slope, uh, as you say, quite flat at the moment, but shortly they will be onto a three degree uh, downward gradient before they take the first of the turns and then they will negotiate a one kilometre incline all the way up to the top turning point. Uh, they will also pass very shortly their personal 
refreshment station uh, where they can they can have any drinks they want and their team officials will hand out uh, those drinks for them so they uh, are on a two kilometer circuit with a, a left hand turn at each end and they have to negotiate of course five laps to make up their full 10 kilometer distance Chinese are very strong favorites they've won four of the last five team titles in this competition but rapid improvements are possible don't expect uh, don't be too surprised if there are one or two athletes coming out of the woodwork who were not uh, lauded before the race these athletes are used to the five kilometer distances under 18s and so have little experience many of them over 10k that's right yes this this race is often uh, you know an occasion where we see stars of the future appearing uh, previous winners of this event include uh, the current Olympic champion from from Sapporo last year uh, Antonella Palmisano of Italy she won here in 2010 as a junior and went on to Olympic gold as a senior uh, the, the, the defending champion Alenia Gonzalez from Mexico she was fifth at the Olympics and she goes in the women's 20k later this afternoon full teams in this race from Australia China Spain and Italy and then a number of other countries have two athletes uh, Brazil Finland France Poland Slovakia Turkey and USA so two athletes to score well Sandri that possibly the tallest in the race the uh, young Australian it's her first international competition incredibly excited coached by Bob Cruz since 2016 and uh, she says he's why she's still in the sport but advised as well by Australia's most bemedalled Olympic athlete, Jared Talent. He also advises her. And as already this year, Sandri there in that uh, green and yellow strip for Australia, set personal best for 5,000 metres on the track and 10,000 metres on the track as well. And has huge hopes, of course, for those World Under-20 Championships in Cali, Colombia, later in the year. They run from the 1st to the 6th of August. To the right in blue is uh, Reshma Patel of India, the only Indian athlete here. She uh, has a best of 49.28. And anything under 50 minutes, really, is very high-caliber walking for these uh, under-20 women. Uh, having said that, the uh, fastest time in the world this year, 44.33. Sandery, the Australian, has walked 46 and a half minutes, 46.35 to be precise. And India, one of the up-and-coming nations in race walking, the silver medalist from the World Under-20s last year in the men's race, uh, we will see uh, shortly after this women's 10K. Just to recap on the rules, Tim, uh, race walking has one rule, which has two parts, uh, which is as follows. Race walking is a progression of steps so taken uh, that the walker makes contact with the ground so that no visible to the human eye loss of contact occurs. The advancing leg must be straightened, i.e. not bent at the knee, from the moment of first contact with the ground until the vertical upright position. So essentially two infringements. Uh, one is loss of contact with the ground and the other is bent knee. And uh, the judges who we saw earlier, uh, they enforce the rules in two ways one is yellow paddles that's a warning to the athlete essentially it's saying i'm watching you uh, i'm not satisfied that you're following the rules uh, but it doesn't lead in any way to disqualification and then there are red cards uh, the judges give red cards to the athletes but the athletes don't actually see which judge is is giving them a red card they are recorded on the board which we will see shortly and with three red cards they serve a penalty in the penalty zone and if they get a fourth red card then they will be disqualified and uh, for those who are unfamiliar with the race walking just to put that some of that uh, rules that Mara was talking about into layman's terms you can't walk you maintain have to maintain contact with the ground all the time you can't walk Groucho Marx style though with sort of bent legs the whole way and lowered hips you have to straighten the uh, supporting leg, the knee must lock. Well, there's the splits at uh, one kilometre, 507, 508 for this big, big pack. I mean, very early stages, of course. Sandery of Australia laying her cards on the table very early on and making it pretty quick uh, by pushing on at the front end and everybody else trying to hang on to her coattail, so to speak, although the Chinese, I'm sure, are comfortable at this speed. Jiang, Jin Yang, Jiang, 
the world's fastest junior at uh, 10 kilometers last year and the world's fastest this year at 20 kilometers she's very very uh, strong just 18 years old the chinese but the uh, profile of this circuit and you can see there in the background the drop down to the turnaround that gives you an idea of how they're gradually climbing on this section it is uh, quite intense the uphill section they're negotiating at the moment the up uphill journey to the far end and let's take a look at the uh, profile of the course they're walking with the wind behind them at the moment we understand there you can see from the start left a picture they're walking down towards the 750 meter point and then at the moment they've made the turn and they're heading quite an uphill that's the one kilometer point they passed out a couple of minutes ago but you can see that is the steepest point of the uphill climb between the 750 and 500 meters towards the two kilometer point three percent graphic uh, three percent incline is a steeper than it sounds so through one kilometer tim they were outside five minutes 507 for sandry the leader so quite a, a modest start but sandry looking like she wants to push it on at the front of this race uh, the world under 20 record 41 57 so currently they're outside 50 minute pace for 10,000 and the two turkish athletes there uh prominent turkey also doing very well but she has real strength and form obviously great temperament for championships last year at the world under 20 championships in nairobi and considering that was at altitude too about 6,000 feet she finished in fourth place just outside the medals here she is the best part of a year stronger with all that training accumulating and it makes such a big difference when you're in your teens too each year well she accelerates in towards that uh, water station takes plenty of water on board and clearly mara the heat must be getting to some of these athletes already because that uh, was poured over her head a plenty yes absolutely we saw 21 degrees earlier but the sun is fully up and the temperature will be rising We're expecting a high later of 27 or 28 and how these athletes have acclimatized will be really key and i'm i think it it will actually benefit athletes coming from the southern hemisphere and the tropics uh sholomitska has been training in turkey uh athletes in colder countries have been doing special heat acclimatization indoors i know some of the british athletes have been doing that uh, there's that uh, turnaround at the uh, southernmost point of the course but it's at the top of the hill so to speak very soon they will be passing what is the penalty zone and then going through the common start finish line for this event and we'll get an idea of the first two kilometer split look at the chinese there in uh, echelon all three of them great technicians the chinese they very rarely get uh, penalties or indeed any disqualifications and it is the fatigue that comes in later in the race that enables or rather forces some athletes to produce poor technique and when they start getting penalties you get a lot of the penalties in the latter stages because the tiredness takes its toll absolutely yeah i haven't seen any any signs of any yellow paddles yet from the judges the, pa the judges can can give out paddles for either of the infringements but as i said the yellow paddles don't lead to any disqualification china has been very very dominant it's possible we could even see a, a sweep of the medals uh, won the last three team gold medals at this event well de la Haye of uh, france already beginning to lose a little bit of ground there anna de la Haye, the 17 year old indeed big gaps appearing because there has been quite an acceleration through that second kilometer i got them unofficially going through the uh, two kilometer line at 958 and with the first kilometer of 507 well clearly that uh, second kilometer was that 451 is that what it works out at <laughs> Yeah, so they there are, or they are speeding much quicker. up. Yeah, they are speeding up. Yeah, and Chinese look like they might be working together there. Now, Mara, I have to say, do you have any idea why the Chinese athletes have got those plasters over their <laughs> um, tummy buttons? 
I don't know. It looks like kinesiology tape to me, and it could be to do with injury, could be uh, a muscle activation thing. Uh, I mean, they've all got them in the same place, so I'm, I'm just wondering if it's... They can't have the same injury, so I'm wondering if it's a muscle activation thing. So lots of the athletes, they're going for water. Interesting, a lot of them putting it on their heads rather than drinking it just to try and keep nice and cool. Well, I'll tell you what, that acceleration came through the second kilometer which was the uphill section and it has ripped this field asunder because you go back five minutes ago and there really weren't many gaps at all now they're spread out and it looks almost like carnage behind this uh, leading pack of what about 10 or 15 there's the uh, Chinese Jiang Jinyan 18 years old now comes from the uh, coastal province of Jiangsu just north of Shanghai may be used to those uh, humid temperatures in the Chinese summer China had this incredible national program with a sort of seemingly endless line of new talent coming through. In, at the Doha World Championships they won five out of the six medals on offer for race walking for the women well, it's a massive sport, isn't it, in China? You know, the resources that are pumped into it uh, sort of go hand in hand with the numbers of youngsters coming through and being recruited. And somebody getting a warning there, and I think that was Patel to the extreme left of the pack in the blue. Yeah, yellow uh, warning card for Patel. And that would be uh, for loss of contact. Or it could yep. be with uh, the uh, supporting leg not locking, but it's more likely to be a contact issue. Yep, currently on our computer, Tim, no red cards showing at present. So all the athletes so far doing pretty well with their adherence to the rules. But as the race progresses and, and as the speed increases towards the end of the race, that could well change. Well, nobody really has accelerated away from this pack yet, but it's hard when they are pumping out such a, a quick tempo. They're under extreme pressure, these athletes, because they are moving so quick. And that's what I, one of the things I love about race walking, Mara, is, you know, these are very, very tough athletes. They put in long, long hours of, of training, of course, because of the relatively low intensity of a lot of the training. They have to be out there for a long time. It's a bit like cycling in, in some respects compared with, for yeah. example, distance running. But what I love about the racing of race walkers is that they go flat out. It seems like they go flat out all the time. You don't get slowing and looking around at each other and trying to suss out your opponents like you get in marathon running sometimes or in distance races on the track. Race walkers, there always seems to be somebody prepared to go to the front yeah. and really put the pressure on, put the foot down. Yeah, I mean, especially in the shorter events, the 10K, 5K, 20K, you know, the speed they're going at is unbelievable. In the 50K, which has been discontinued now as a championship event, uh, you know, there's a, there's a bit of pacing yourself and then speeding up in the final kilometres, but the speed in these shorter events is absolutely phenomenal. Well, the, the official time at two kilometres, by the way, was 9.57. They're coming up towards three kilometres very shortly. And I think in the background behind the group, we just glimpsed a judge giving a loss of contact yellow paddle. So the warnings now <laughs> coming thick and fast to judges just saying I'm watching you closely and if you get a yellow paddle that doesn't necessarily link to a red card but the judges certainly will be watching the athletes Sholomitska very much to the fore she's tall isn't she the uh, Ukrainian athlete in blue there to left of picture very very tight arm action there compared with some of them who have an accentuated arm action but of course the Fitness levels required for these athletes. You can see the Chinese, they're almost in rhythm with a very, very similar technique. They are clearly, they clearly work very, very hard on their technique. But these athletes have to have enormous fitness in the upper body as well, not just in the, the legs and in the uh, midriff, the core. But because the uh, arms work so hard as well, they have to be uh, very, very well conditioned. Yeah, that's a really noticeable difference, Tim, between the race walkers and, say, marathon runners. The race walkers tend to have a uh, more developed upper body. I'm just hearing from Jane Savile, one of the Australian race walking icons from the past, that she, she had a conversation with a Chinese official about the tape they have over their 
belly buttons there, which you can see uh, on your screen, something to do with air passing through. So this is to make them more aerodynamic, apparently. And still no red cards showing on our screen, so everybody currently uh, adhering to the rules. Well, we're uh, hearing we have got a red card, Mara, in fact, for uh, Ayaz uh, of Turkey, Sukran Ayaz, the 18-year-old, who is a strong walker. She's a sub-50-minute walker has got one red card and, and and again you know it's the pressure that's being put on from the front end isn't it you can sort of indirectly affect athletes around you by working walking so hard that they have to perhaps go into that red zone in effect they, they start breaking the rules yes absolutely i mean if you have surges in speed that can and with if an athlete's technique isn't quite what it should be that can that can trigger a red card i get the feeling that calorie there in that white vest for france is just hanging on she's been there on the edge of the group, she's a tiny figure, she's probably about the shortest in the group is uh, Elvina Carré, she was disqualified from the World Junior 10,000 metres in Nairobi last year, but she recently won the French Junior 3,000 metre title indoors, just speed it up, or put in some speed work with that competition recently, indeed many of these athletes have had one or two indoor walking events, walking races, just to sharpen up over 3,000 or 5,000, relentless to the back of this group, out of shot at the moment, to looks to me like she uh, might be under pressure and perhaps the next to peel off. In fact, she is right at the back of the group now in that white vest. How many in this group would you say? About 11 or 12? About 12? Yeah, so it looks like, yeah, 11, 12. Just having confirmation, Tim, that that red card for Ayaz, the Turkish athlete, that was for Bentley. She is the only athlete currently with a red card. There's only one disqualification. One uh, disqualification board which shows the red cards on the course so it is possible that some athletes could accumulate more than one red card uh, between lap between the times they pass the board so they can have a nasty surprise when they come to see the board and of course after passing the the board for the last time uh, between the disqualification well, some of the back markers now coming through. Here's Patel, who had to sit out a time penalty, I think, earlier in the race. Actually, what, about 20 minutes ago, quite some time ago, I think Patel had to sit out that time penalty. And that knocks you back a long way, of course. Yeah, and we saw the Turkish athlete Ayaz, who had been on one red card, finishing down in 21st place. Well, they got underway at 8 a.m. local time in Moscow. Spasin, co-president of World Athletics having uh, shown his feelings with that uh, square of flowers in the colours of Ukraine, the gold and the blue. That was momentarily before the athletes got underway, this field of 36 in this first of six races.